knowing that they were all on there, he must have just copied them. there in his honour, apparently. A history of bizarre suicides, including people just jumping out of the windows, and one that one killed somebody when they landed on a pedestrian, and an unsolved murder involving a strangulation in a room of a long-term resident. It's kind of a it's kind of a host, a hostel as well as a hotel. And there are some long-term residents there. It's a bit like in the benefit system in the UK can't get someone a permanent place to live, you're often given B&B accommodation long term until they find somewhere, perhaps, if they do. But anyway, this, this strange footage was from the inside of an elevator that was on the top floor, floor 14, one that was just under the roof. A Chinese girl who, who, who was travelling there from Vancouver, Canada, was spotted doing strange things in the elevator. First coming in, uh, then seeming to hide, but not, not as if she was in fear of someone particularly. Uh, mashing all the buttons up for all the floors, and possibly holding the door open. Poking her head out around the door as if, as if looking for somebody who might be after her. Nobody had a clue, but but then the 
hotel's water supply um, started to go strange. Guests at the hotel complained that there wasn't enough water pressure and that the that the taste of the water in the hotel was, was, was becoming strange and becoming discoloured. And that was enough after about two weeks of her disappearance for an employee to go up and check the the reservoir water tank at the top of the hotel. And they did that and discovered her dead and naked body at the bottom. And so, why is it such a mystery? It took the authorities a long time to, to look at the case, to do a toxicology report. They concluded that she had no drugs in her system. She did have a history of being depressed with bipolar. So you up one minute, down the next, and all these wild fluctuations in your mood, which could point at it being a suicide, or being some sort of bizarre accidental death really seem to stack up because it's really difficult to get into the water tank. They had to cut the water tank open to get the body out. So how would she have got in? So that you would think would lead, uh, lend itself more to somebody putting her in. It's possible that she might have done it in some sort of bizarre episode or uh, where she didn't really know her own mind. And that, that does go on. And the elevator footage might go along with that. But it also feels creepy enough that it might be a murder, that it might be somebody, it might have been somebody hiding just out of view of the, the camera in the elevator in the corridor, and, and that she was hiding from them all, that she was, that she somehow knew them and was playing along with them and thought that things were alright. And then, of course, we know that what would have been relatively shortly after this footage was recorded, she was found dead. So you can go and check the footage out on YouTube if, you, if you're watching this on YouTube and you can switch to that video to see what I mean, but it's ridiculously creepy in the light of what we know that she ended up dead. The case has remained unsolved, but they're, really they're calling it an accidental death, but you know, it just lends itself to there being all sorts of theories. One is that, that if you do believe in the paranormal, and with a hotel with a history like the Cecil Hotel in downtown LA. There could be malevolent spirits there. They can't do anything as dramatic as is generally thought as actually lifting a body up and murdering you. Although, you know, there may have been cases, depending on what you're prepared to believe, where someone, someone's been choked by a, a spirit. You know, it's possible, but generally speaking, they prey on the soul and get you to think bad thoughts and if you're already mentally vulnerable this this could be an easy way for them to prey on you and, a, and, a, and in an atmosphere such as that of the Cecil Hotel, this rather run down hotel that is partly home to a transient population. It's located in a rough area of LA called Skid Row which is home to the biggest homeless population in the USA. Then the case is perhaps unexplainable explainable enough to make that a possibility, as well as it being possibly a more conventional murder. She could have even been murdered by the CIA or something. It was very strange. A Google Maps um, search coincidentally located the Invisible Light Company or something something similarly named, similarly named to that. And that was a company working on invisibility cloaks. In what is one of many, believe it or not, coincidences with this Eliza Lamb case, she tweeted about invisibility cloaks. So that was strange, I have to say. Another thing that was strange is that there was a TB outbreak amongst the homeless population in Skid Row, and the treatment program for it was called the Lamb Eliza program. And that was at the time that she was missing. So that's another coincidence there. Yeah, it's a deeply sad case, I would say. Um, because you won't know if she was actually suicidal or not, or whether somebody helped her along with it, or whether it was, it was foul play, whether it was even paranormal, whether it was a conspiracy. It's possible if someone 
knows too much, they're murdered in a very clever way. She'd been travelling almost as a dropout, I think, just to get away from her studies, but she'd, she'd come up from San Diego and was making her way up the Californian state. So there are even questions with that. Why would she choose the Cecil Hotel? I guess it's a cheapish hotel in a fairly rundown part of town. It's so cheap, in fact, that some rooms don't even have their own bathrooms. You actually have to share it with other guests. It's like a bit like a campsite, really. And you could bump into all sorts of folks, couldn't you? So that makes you think as well. Well, after this incident and all of the, the shady history of the Cecil Hotel, they decided finally to change their name. Call themselves a stay in Maine after the Eliza Lamb case. Of course, many reviews online still pointing out the history of this hotel. So, you know, we've just gone through the town of Frogham. I've mainly not been thinking about the town of Frogham, which I think was probably Davis, and more about the Eliza Lamb case. Um, I'm trying to, trying to make a small program for one of seven. But it would be interesting to know how I could do that. It's just a small one. But it's one of the more interesting cases. We I mean, just take a look at that footage, it's unbelievable. I don't think you'll be able to forget it. The way um, that she seems kind of playful, kind of um, maybe a little bit out of her mind, maybe intentional. We don't even know what's going on. And then, I mean, for, for the last known sighting of a person, this is just unbelievably creepy to see. A strange hand gestures that she's doing and body language. It's led some to even think that she might have been possessed by a spirit. So you, you do have to have a really open mind, but I do. I believe there's all sorts possible out there beyond what we know. And I think, I mean, you only have to think that some in some places you can go to, even whole towns, you can sense a whole vibe. And what is it that you're sensing? It's not something you're seeing or even smelling or hearing. Body picks up an energy related to it, doesn't it? And definitely, if you went inside this hotel, if you're a sensitive person, and you will be if you suffer from bipolar, you just know that something isn't right, and that can play havoc with your mental health at the time. I'm just trying to remember now how to get to Runcorn. We're on video, aren't we? To Runcorn, we're also going to Liverpool. Blog about something else now. I'm changing the subject over. Two. Um, nice Two. The demo in London. Oh, I didn't go. I don't know why I didn't. Because it was an anxious person. I knew it was coming up. Uh, you know, there are things I'd have to get ready. Mainly to get a train journey would be what I'd have to do. There's a lot of roadworks going on here. It's major stuff, isn't it? Anyway, it's one of the biggest demos ever, apparently. With a quarter of a million people rumoured to have gone. The pretext of it is the Tory government getting in with a majority of 12. Which is apparently not a very big majority, but, you know, it's big enough because they're in government. And all the cuts they're going to do. Welfare is going to suffer apparently 12 to 15 billion pounds worth of cuts. Public, the public sector, which they are always keen on selling off, is going to be cut by 30 billion. Public, pu public spending, I think this is, and I think they're going to sell off more publicly owned things. They've already done a lot of that during the Thatcher era and they're just carrying that on now. The post office won't be national anymore. The probation service isn't actually. So it's a general protest that it was, just generally marching through. There's one, there's one point of cynicism that I will agree with, unfortunately, is that it won't change anything. Not directly. Except uh, to make the government aware that there are some people against what they're doing and they know that already. It'd be interesting to know just how far you would have to go to really stop what they want to do that's going to be so destructive. It's just to take many people below the minimum threshold of which you need to live by dropping them with hardly any money and cutting off 
enough benefits so that it's not possible to live. There's already lots of sanctions on job seekers allowance where if you don't do exactly what they want you to do, they'll cut you off for weeks, months. They're introducing that to the incapacity equivalent of benefits in ESA, restricting DLA as well, which they want to reduce by at least 20%. The welfare budget as a whole, that's £220 billion. Pounds. When you hear about the country, you go, it's only £15 billion of it. But I guess it has to, to strike somewhere. Possibly working tax credits, possibly. Possibly housing benefit, possibly DLA. So they had this, so they had this huge march and I didn't get there, unfortunately, so I'm going to another one. So just fuck it. It's the wrong bloody way. I was about to go on to the industrial estate. Get out of the way of this lorry. I, w 
once, yeah? But because there was nothing coming, I thought, well, yeah, we can... I'm not sure they've changed it. It looks a bit different, doesn't it? it looks different from what I remember, but they couldn't have changed it, surely. They seem to be doing a lot of works, though, so maybe they have. to come onto this road that we're just getting onto now and we end up down here as the video is going to reveal it I suppose I'm pretty sure we'd... No, we're not meant to have ended up here we're supposed to be on this road already